Hello, and welcome to this uh, Blender 2.66 tutorial. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to have a animated character, a rigged character, uh, interact with um, the new rigid body tools in Blender. Um, and basically, this method to uh, do this is it's very simple, actually. Um, it can get complicated if you have a very complicated character, of course, but in our case, uh, I will be showing you the very, very basic, bare bones way to do it on a very simple rig, just to get, show you an idea of how you would go about uh, creating it on a more complicated rig. Um, but yeah, it, basically, in summary, what we're going to do today is we're going to have, say we have, say this is our character, and say we have bones here and here okay and it's rigged and it's all deforming correctly and all that right now the blender physics engine if we were to have say we wanted our character to um, walk in a pile of cubes or something I don't know it wanted to move we wanted our character our moving rigged character to collide with cubes right now you might think, oh, I could just set the mesh of the character to um, to active, or to uh, passive, I mean. You just set the mesh to passive, and you would be able to have it collide, but you can't. It doesn't work like that. But there is an easy way around that, actually. What you can do is instead of having this be the collision, you make a separate mesh, a, what I call a proxy mesh. It's probably not the right term, but you make it as close around the original mesh as you can, and basically, you put it around each bone, and then all you have to do is parent um, <clears throat> that bone to this proxy mesh so that wherever the bone rotates or moves, the mesh will follow. And basically, that surrounds the character, and it, this box, since it doesn't deform, the physics engine will allow that to be collidable. And you'll be able to get re uh, a result with that method. So we're going to do that. So let me delete that layer and let me turn on my, um, actually I don't have this on. I'm sorry about this. Let me quickly turn on screencast keys. Screencast. Okay. Um, okay, sorry about that. All right, so basically let's just add in a new cube and start from the beginning. Okay, so now we're just going to make a really simple rig, the simplest rig we can. So let's just scale this up on the x-axis and add in an armature, a single bone. And to make this easier on us, let's go to the armature settings and make it x-ray so that we can see through it. All right, now let's quickly just, you know, go to front view, change to orthographic view, and just move it over, tap into edit mode, and just quickly set up, you know, a really basic two-bone rig. There you go. Okay. This is an, an introduction to rigging. I'm assuming you are, already know something about rigging. All right. So you have this. And now let's just quickly select your mesh, shift select your bones, control P, parent with automatic weights. So now we have, oh, what? Do that backwards. I did something wrong. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, there's. I forgot one step. First, you have to uh, subdivide this a little bit. Let's delete that parent. Uh, we gotta add in a couple loops, or else it's not going to move at all. <laughs> it's pretty important. Let's just add in one or two loops. Or three or four. Okay, there. Now select the mesh. Parent with automatic weights. And now we have a really bad looking rig. That's okay. I, I'm assuming you have a fully rigged character that is, you know, it looks fine. But the quality of the rig doesn't matter for this. <laughs> okay. So now quickly, all we need to do really is add in another cube. And 
and this cube basically will surround this bone. So we're just going to scale it up just a little bit. And also, if you select the cube and go to Object Settings and set Wire, it'll make it, it'll make it a lot easier. Oh, not Wire. Um, type to Wire. It'll make it a lot easier to see this, especially in the end when you have the whole thing surrounding it. So basically, just scale it around and move it until it, you know, fits it. And of course, if this were like an organic mesh or anything, you'd want to model it so that, you know, it would fit the curves and all that. And that's that's what I was saying. It, it will get more complicated the more complicated mesh you have. If you can make a proxy mesh really rough, and it will look fine, but if so you're doing like a really close up shot of like, you know, someone's feet hitting something, you're going to want a more accurate mesh. And so that can take a little bit more time, but that's just what you got to do. But <clears throat> in this case, it's very, uh, it's very easy to uh, fit the shape of this rectangle. All right. So we have this, we're going to duplicate that with shift D, move it over, scale it a little bit, scale a little more. And that's pretty much it. All right, so now we have our two cubes. And we will parent these. We'll go uh, select our armature, shift tab, or control tab to go into uh, pose mode. <clears throat> select a bone, or select a cube, select a bone, control P to bone. Make sure it's just the bone. Select the other one, and do the same thing, control P to bone. So now you see. The cube rotates around, and yeah, everything is fine and dandy. Obviously, we have this problem right here, and that poses a problem, yes. Um, perhaps a method of uh, fixing that would be to, say, duplicate this middle bone, or this one on the right. Um, the one that is parented to the higher, uh, the bone on the higher hierarchy, I guess you'd say, um, and move it in so it'd be like sort of an elbow joint, like say, you know, a joint that somebody would have um, on their elbow, <laughs> and not a joint, a uh, like a a guard on a knight's suit of armor. Okay, so right now this is also parented to uh, this first bone, so if you rotate that. You rotate that. You have a little more pr protection, you could say, on that part of the thing. And that's the only solution I have right now for that problem. Um, I'm sure somebody smarter than me will think of a better one. But yeah, that's what I got. All right. So now you have these three proxy bones, as I said before, um, creating the outer mesh for your character. So let's just do a little rigging, or a little animating, I mean. Sorry, it's uh, kind of late at night. I've been doing homework and just wanted to get this out. Okay, so we're just going to have our character, our character, I guess you could call it. Uh, we're just going to have him let's turn on automatic keyframing. We'll just have him go along, we'll rotate him a bit, uh, we'll move him. It really doesn't matter what happens as long as you have some movement, some rotation, showing that it can hit things, maybe drag across the surface a little bit. And just one more time. You know, some really, obviously this isn't <laughs> animating at its finest. It is only to demonstrate that this can indeed, when animated, it can affect the other the cubes that we will eventually put in. And so, you know, we look at our simple animation, and okay, looks fine to me. Obviously, it doesn't look good, <laughs> but yeah. So what I did there is I just added in a plane because we're going to start putting in our cubes. And we're just going to add in uh, some cubes. 
Okay. Let's just duplicate it a little bit. Doesn't matter where you place them because they're all going to be set to rigid body. Actually, before we do that, I'm sorry. Before we do that, or before we start du duplicating, let's take our original cube and move it to layer 2. M2. Alright, now let's start duplicating. That way we can have them all on one layer. It makes it a lot easier to deal with when you do the physics and all that jazz. Why did I just say that? Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so you have these cubes. Select them all, box select, add active. Select one of them, calculate mass. Uh, we'll make it brick soft, copy from active. Now, go here, select your plane, add passive. Make sure both your layers are selected. If they're not, uh, shift select one of the others. Let's press play. You can see we have all of our cubes fall into the ground. Beautifully. Okay, but nothing's colliding. That's because we have not set these to be passive. So all you have to do is select the proxy meshes, add passive, add passive, and add passive. And now if you play, So you can see one is getting affected. You are passive, right? Maybe I have to get out of data, data mode. What is going on? Oh, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. This is what you gotta do. All right, so you these are technically animated because they're parented. So all you have to do is go to this setting, uh, to the physics setting, type click animated and do that on all of them. And now it should work. There we go. Sorry about that. Forgot about that one step. You just got to select animated. Okay. And now obviously that looks really, really bad, <laughs> but you can see what's important about that is that it is colliding with things and you know, simple, simple, simple physics simulation. It's not complicated at all. But when you think about it, this can be applied to so many things. This really simple method can be really diversified. It can be implemented into things like, say, a character punching a cinder block. And you could implement the, also the new cell fracture tools. And you could do that with this. And you could um, have a character... Uh, I don't know, punch the ground, um, and it can interact with that. It could jump through a brick wall if it's like the Hulk or something. It can do so many different things just with this one simple method demonstrated from this really simple simulation. Um, you know, it's not perfect. The mesh around it could be better, but that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. You can make these proxies really accurate and get a really accurate simulation, and really it's it's not too hard to set up it just takes time to get an accurate um proxy around your character um so yeah that's basically what you do it's it's pretty simple um and i hope i can see somebody you know take this method of mine this really simple method of mine and uh you know make something great out of it because this is really really awesome stuff that we now have the ability to do i mean this kind of interaction was previously almost impossible using the game industry uh game engine i had you know myself i had no idea how to do this um so yeah this really cool stuff if you you know make anything please you know post a video response or something but yeah thank you for watching my video my name is ben morgan and if you enjoyed this video please subscribe i will uh you know have more hopefully helpful tutorials for you and Thank you for watching.